What's going on guys, Jin here, and this is my Charge Bolt build for clearing C100s relatively fast and easily without really having to think about anything as the Charge Bolts will hunt down your enemies and zap them relentlessly. This definitely isn't a meta build, nor is it one of the stronger builds this season for pushing or anything like that, but it's a nice fun alternative in my opinion. Before we get into it, if you like these builds, please leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell and leave a comment if you feel like it. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks a lot everyone, now let's get to the build. So for the skill tree, we're going to go with 2 into Firebolt. We're going to come down into our core skills, take 1 into Devastation, and 3 into Elemental Dominance. And of course we're going to go for 5 into Charged Bolts, and we're going to go for the Greater Charged Bolts. If you find yourself needing the more defensive option, then just switch it over to Destructive Charged Bolts. Then in our defensive skills, we're going to take one into Teleport and go for Shimmering Teleport, three into Glass Cannon, one into Elemental Attunement, one into Ice Armor, and go for the Shimmering Ice Armor. In our Conjuration skills, we're going to take one into Ice Blades, going for the Summoned Ice Blades, one into Lightning Spear, going for the Invoked Lightning Spear, 3 into Conjuration Mastery, 1 into Align the Elements, 3 into Mana Shield, and 3 into Protection. For our Mastery skills we're going to go for 1 into Inner Flames, and 3 into Devouring Blaze. Then we're also going to take 3 into Static Discharge. In our Ultimate skills we'll take 1 into Permafrost, and 3 into Hoarfrost. We're going to take Unstable Currents, with Prime Unstable Currents. Then we're going to take 1 into Coursing Currents, 3 into Electrocution, and 1 into Convulsions. And for our key passive, we're just going to take the Veer's Mastery. For the enchantments, we're going to go for Firebolt as our first enchantment, so direct damage from skills applies burning damage. That's how we will proc our Devouring Blaze and our Flame Feeder Glyph. And for our second enchantment, we're going to go for the Ice Blades enchantment. So every 40 seconds in cooldowns we spend, we spawn an Ice Blades on a random enemy. Next up we have the Paragon board. We're going to be using an 8 Glyph board here. For our first Glyph, we're going to be using Elementalist in the starting board, of course. So dealing Fire, Cold or Lightning damage to an enemy. Increases all damage we deal to them by 5% for 10 seconds, stacking once per element. For our second board, we're going to go for the Enchantment Master board, and we're going to put in the Unleash Glyph. So after spending 50 mana, we deal 8% increased damage, and gain 25% increased mana regen for 3 seconds. For our third board, we're going to go for the Burning Instinct board, and we're going to put in the Tactician Glyph here, so we deal 10% increased damage for 4 seconds after casting a defensive skill. This duration is increased by 4 seconds for each defensive skill not on the action bar. For our fourth board, we're going down from there, and we're going to take the Frigid Fate board, making sure we take the Legendary node, so we deal bonus damage to vulnerable enemies equal to 20% of the total amount of our bonus damage with cold, up to a max of 60%, which is what we'll have. For the Glyph we're going to be using Charged here, so picking up Crackling Energy grants 5% increased damage for 5 seconds, up to 15%. For our 5th board, we're going to go to the left, and we're going to go for the Ceaseless Conduit board. We're going to put in the Destruction Glyph, that gives us Critical Strike damage, and Critical Strikes increase all damage the enemy takes from us by 2% for 10 seconds, up to 12%. Then up from there we have our 6th board, it's going to be the Searing Heat board, and we're going to put in the Exploit Glyph. That gives us a bunch of vulnerable damage, and dealing damage to a vulnerable enemy increases our damage by 1% for 6 seconds, up to 10%. For our 7th board, we're going to go for the Static Surge board, and we're going to be using the Flame Feeder Glyph, so we get damage to burning enemies, but also we deal 10% increased direct damage to burning enemies. And for our 8th and final board, we come back to our Frigid Fate board, 
and we go down from there to get our elemental summon aboard. So we're making sure we take this legendary node. Our conjuration skills will have 10% reduced cooldown on mana costs, and they deal bonus damage equal to 10% of the total amount of our bonus damage with fire, lightning, and cold, up to 60%, which is what we have. And for the glyph, we're using conjurer. So we get some conjuration damage, and our conjuration skills have 20% increased duration. This will allow us to have a few more conjurations out, which increases our damage with our conjuration mastery passive. So that is it for the Paragon board. All of this is going to be in the build planner in the description below, along with everything else involved in the build. Now let's move on to the gear. So as usual, I'm going to list the affixes we want on the left, and also the tempering. So let's start off with the helm. We're going to go for a Godslayer crown here. That gives us all stats, max life, damage to elites, and cooldown reduction. But also when we stun, freeze, or immobilize an enemy, we pull in all nearby enemies and deal 30 to 60% increased damage for 3 seconds. And this occurs once every 12 seconds. And against bosses, this effect triggers when dealing damage instead. And we're going to try and masterwork the cooldown reduction. If you don't have a Godsayer crown, just use a normal helm with cooldown reduction, intelligence, and max life, and you would temper that with warmth and lucky hit percent chance to freeze. As for the aspect, you would use something like Snow Veiled, so casting Ice Armor makes you unstoppable, and grants 25% damage reduction for 3.5 to 5 seconds, or Mage Lords, so the Veer's Mastery Key passive will grant you 6 to 9% damage reduction, tripled while fighting a close enemy. And just like the Godsayer Crown, you would also masterwork the cooldown reduction. Next up we have the chest piece. We're going to be using something with intelligence, armor, and defensive skills. We're going to temper that with warmth and lucky hit percent chance to freeze. And for the aspect, we're going to be using Everliving. So you take 10 to 25% less damage from CC'd or vulnerable enemies. As for the masterworking, we're going to try and masterwork the intelligence here. Next up for the gloves, we're using normal gloves with attack speed, critical strike chance, and ranks into charge bolts. And we're going to temper that with crit damage and lucky hit percent chance to freeze. And for the aspect, we're using piercing static. So charge bolts pierce, but deal 70 to 40% less damage to targets hit after the first. As for the masterworking, we're going to try and masterwork those ranks into charge bolts. Next up, we have the pants. We're going to be using Tybalt's Will, that gives us all stats, max life, max resource, and damage reduction whilst unstoppable. But also we deal 10 to 20% increased damage while unstoppable and for 5 seconds after. When we become unstoppable, we also gain 50 primary resource. As for the masterworking, you're going to try and masterwork the max life here. If you don't have access to Tybalt's Will, use some legs with intelligence, max life, and armor. Temper that with warmth and lucky hit percent chance to freeze. And for the aspect, I would use the Mage Lords here. As for the masterworking, I would masterwork the intelligence. Next up we have the boots. We're going to use boots with intelligence, movement speed, and mana per second. And we're going to temper that with teleport cooldown reduction and lucky hit percent chance to freeze. As for the aspect, we're going to be using the aspect of the Orange Herald. So on lucky hit, we have up to a 5-10% to chance to reduce the cooldown of our ultimate skill by 2 seconds, and that can only happen once per cast. Alternatively, you can use S's Heirloom for even more damage, and less defense. You would then swap out Orange Herald onto your chest piece, and swap the intelligence on your chest piece for mana per second. As for the masterworking on the S's, you would masterwork the critical strike damage. Next up, we have the main weapon here, we're going to be using a two-handed weapon, the Staff of Lamb Essen. This is mandatory for the build, and I wouldn't recommend doing it without it, as it makes the clears a lot simpler. So this is going to give us intelligence, chance for charge bolts to cast twice, resource cost reduction, and ranks into charge bolts. And also our cast of charge bolts have a 40-80% to chance to be attracted to enemies, and last 300% longer. This allows you to just cast charge bolts basically anywhere, and for the charge bolts to track down your enemies. As for the masterworking, we're going to try and masterwork the charge bolts here. Next up we have the amulet. We're going to be looking for a normal amulet with conjuration mastery, attack speed, and critical strike chance. And we're going to temper that with crit damage and unstable currents cooldown reduction. As for the masterworking, you're going to try and masterwork the conjuration mastery. 
and for the aspect we're going to be using Storm Swell. So we deal 23 to 45% increased damage to vulnerable enemies while we have a barrier. Next up we have the rings. We're going to be using Talrash's Iridescent Loop as our first ring. That gives us lucky hit chance, non-physical damage and cooldown reduction, as well as ranks into potent warding. Also, for each elemental damage type we deal, we gain 10 to 20% increased damage for 4 seconds, up to 40 to 80%, and dealing any elemental damage refreshes all bonuses. As for the masterworking, you want to try and masterwork the cooldown reduction here. For our second ring, we're just using a normal ring with intelligence, attack speed, and critical strike chance, and we're going to temper that with critical strike damage and unstable currents cooldown reduction. As for the aspect, we're going to be using the aspect of Shredding Blades here. So Ice Blade's chance to apply vulnerable is increased by 20%, and the duration is increased by 4 seconds. We also gain 15 to 30% vulnerable damage, depending on the roll of course. As for the Master Weapon, you want to try and Master Weapon the attack speed. If you don't happen to have a Tal Rash's Iridescent Loop, then you would just use a duplicate of this second ring, and for the aspect, you would use Conceited so you'll deal 10 to 25% increased damage while you have a barrier active. That's pretty much it for the gear. For the gems, we're going to be using skulls in the jewelry for that armor. We're going to be using the emeralds in the weapon for the critical strike damage. And for the armor, we're going to be using the rubies for maximum life. That's pretty much all there is to this build. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and leave a comment if you feel like it really helps out the channel a lot and it is very very appreciated. Thanks again for watching and I'll leave you with some charge bolt action. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye!